Please, can I see the doctor? Can I ask what for? I said, no, it's personal. Paul, what's wrong? I'm the one to ask you. Can you put me to sleep? I'm, I'm not talking about go to sleep, sleep, you know. I'm talking about taking my life. I was getting racist abuse from the majority of my own fans. My mum is in a 90. And she, you know back in then when you had the chopper, like you used to chop the chicken? Yeah, I remember. My mother had the chopper. You think you're bad? And she said, chase me, bro. What was your choice of drugs? This is another episode of the Dr. Prince Show. And I'm your host, Dr. Prince OBE. And as usual, my beautiful listeners and viewers, I've got an uh, incredible guest who I uh, hold in great esteem. He's none other than Paul Cannonville, first Chelsea black player ha, in the Prem. Get in, my brother, Paul. How are you, man? Not too bad. Um, glad to be here, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, since we've met, that was a couple of years ago, oh, was it? Man, I think it was more than a couple of years yeah. ago we met, Paul. And that more was at a, a school ago. workshop, and since then, obviously, here in... Well, let, let me, let me, let's talk about that, because mm. they don't know. <clears throat> um, I got invited to do a school talk by Gary Trousdale, who led on the Damalona Taylor Foundation uh, or Trust uh, Spirit of London Awards. Done a terrific job in raising money and, and bringing together some awesome people. And um, he invited me down to a school in South London. Correct. To do a talk. Lo and behold, I get there. Uh, Chris Ahorogu, gold mm. medalist, is there. The great Paul Cannonville is there. Um, who else we got there? Tennis world champion, table tennis world champion. Yeah. Mm. Who else was there, Pete? Do you remember? God. The weightlifter. Um, weightlifter, dude. Uh, champion, Cheryl. The girl, Cheryl. Chloe. Chloe. Chloe was Definitely, there. yeah, for England. Um, yeah. Yeah, like real well established athletes. Yes. And uh, we had this great audience of young people. Mm. And we let rip. <laughs> we let I rip. That. I think a bit, I think some of it might, it might be on it might be on YouTube. What you know, a bit of the clip. I remember talking with them. It might be on my social media. Mm. I don't know what you put out there on the day. I don't, because that's so funny. And I'm sure was you talked before me. Did or I talk before me? you? Was it after I me? I think I did talk before you. And I was one. I was. At I the was end. looking at Gary and thinking. How can I follow after him, Gary, and hearing his story? He said, don't worry, Paul. I said, no, because you had the, the youth at awe. They were attentive, got yeah? You. And I, that's the idea when I talk, yes. you've got them focused. Yes. And when they're not talking, they're not, you know, you know they're, they're, they're listening. Not, they're, they're, that's and when that's they're not exactly talking, what, and they yeah. just peeled on you. Yeah, yeah and you, you were doing them. that, and I was like, yeah. I gotta work with this guy. Bro, and I'll tell you what, I was <laughs> thinking about you. I was thinking, this is a real one. See. Like, this is what you were born to do, bro. Right. Inspire these youths yeah. and engage with them. Mm. They loved you. I saw the same thing that you saw See. when I was watching you. And I thought, I need to talk to this guy so we right. can do some work together. Definitely. Uh, we haven't made that become a reality it's been... yet. It's gonna happen now. I hear that. Something's happened recently that when you came through the door and you come in today, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I value you even more than before. It's like I treasure you to be able to see you, to see life in you, mm. to know what you've been through recently. Yeah. Um, um. I know your past, Paul, and, and the listener's going to hear more about it and those watching. Um, before you share, I just want to share with you how honored I am, bro, to like be with a man that I've seen fight back so many times when deaths come knocking. 
Do you know what I'm saying, bro? When deaths come knocking, like, nah, it's my turn now. I want to take this guy. And your mindset, your fight for life, your unfinished business attitude that I've got yeah. more to give to these youths, I've got more to give to society, I, I believe has paid a, a um, contribution in you still being here today because yeah. your journey's not, not over. And obviously we know that the great creator has blessed you and given you life mm. to continue, but that's got something to do with your mindset and your decisions. You ain't given in, P. And your whole life, you've stood up against anything that's come up against you. Mm. Racism, being the first black footballer, playing for Chelsea, bruv. Like, I'm from, 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 I'm only gonna speak from my knowledge and from how we look at things on the road. Mm. I've come up as an 80s youth. Do you know what I'm saying? 69, baby, 70s. 80s, we was there through the whole of hooliganism and all we see football change um, before it come back to what it is now, where it's kind of toned down now. But we saw all that. We saw the Cyril Regis's, we saw the yeah. Viv Anderson's, uh, do you know what I'm saying? We saw the, what's that other guy's name? L Lauren. Cunningham. Yeah, bruv, Cunningham. Brendan Batson. Come on, man. All of them. <laughs> my peers, let's, my peers, my let's peers. Let's talk, man. Let's talk, bro. Come you on. You know what? Um, and it's funny because I've gone over this quite a few times. Yeah. And where it all started at the age of five, knowing what I wanted to be. Okay, really? That but early? coming from a Caribbean background, and you know, because my mom come from the Windrush. Yeah. And she come over here to be a nurse. She came over here at 16 years old, and I'm wow. thinking, that alone was brave of her brave. to come over on a boat, you know how long yeah, it took, bro. just here to come to England. And now I've seen the family, there's nine of them, about five brothers and six, you know what I mean, rest yeah. girls, I'm like, what made mom come to England? Mm. But yeah, don't get me wrong, um, my dad left, or should I say, separated by the age of one. So it's just me and my sister, just yeah, younger. But it was me watching the black and white TV and watching that football. Okay. Back in the day was the 50 pence yes. TV when it ran out, you put that 50 pence wow. back into it quickly, wow. come, come, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was football. It was football. Everything was football. And I went, world lit up. that's what I want to be. Wow. I want to be a professional footballer. So I'm just excited. And I'm telling my mother and saying, yeah, mummy, mummy, I know what I'm going to be. I'm going to be a professional footballer. But mummy wow. just said, that's what you think. Oh <laughs> now, my. she didn't see that yeah. as a sport. You know, but like a Caribbean yeah, one, bro. they don't see that as a no. sport, my yeah? as a career. Yeah. So she wants you to go to school and take your education seriously. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to be honest. Me and school didn't like, I wasn't into education. Yes, I liked maths, but English, science, physics, everything for me was PE, sports. Mm. I was in the cricket team. I was in the basketball team. Yeah. I was in every yeah. sport that was going I was track. in. So exactly, mm. and I, I think what at that time, my mum, and she realised that at that time, she didn't give me that support. Okay. So when I say that support, mum was a very, disciplined woman. She was brought up by her granddad. Mm -hmm. Very disciplined. And I yeah. got to meet, God bless, my granddad, and nice. I see why. Nice. Yeah, mum brought me down there when I was 14, my sister. And to see the family, I understand that background. And I kind of think, why, obviously, if she left St. Martin, I probably wouldn't be born, but I would have preferred to be in St. Martin and been brought up with a bit more discipline, because I didn't have it. And that was the case of not having a mentor, not having that male figure, male figure. bringing me up. And that was my dad. I hear you. So therefore, mum, on her own, and you as a kid not realising what she's doing, what she's working, what she, how hard for her. Tough it is. Right. And you're not looking at it because no. when you're going with your friend, you'll see you've got, you've got new trainers, man. Yeah. Why can't I get new trainers? I'm what? asking mum, can I get trainers? I don't have the money. No, no way. Mum, can I get a new top? No, I don't have money. That's all I'm getting. Yeah. So I'm getting a bit, you know, upset about that. 
But I'm not understanding. It's hard. Mum's got to find pay rent. Mum's got to find food. Wow. Mum's got to take school. And you're not realising until realize. you get older and realise, boy, She's boy, a hero. You was helped. Yeah, man, she was. I'm not lying. Mum, mum's stubborn. That's where I get it from. Yeah. I remember the time when, she, to better herself, like, she came over to be a nurse. Yeah. But she was underage. She was 16. Mm -hmm. She had to be 18. Uh -huh. So now, she's got to find work. Wow. To survive. She went into a hotel and was doing the laundry for the hotel. Mm -hmm. A position came up to be a maid and go in the room and clean. Mm -hmm. More money. Yeah. So she went, went for the position and the manager told her um, the position's gone. Okay, fair enough. But then her friend who worked with her mm -hmm. in the laundry went upstairs for the same position and she was given the job. Oh, wow. Well, mum didn't leave it there. Oh, no, 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 no. He told me it's gone. So she went back upstairs and asked him, hold on a minute. You told me that position was gone, but you just give it to my friend who's white. How come? He told us straight, no black woman could be seen in a hotel room. Wow. Well, mum just said, you know what? Keep your job. And she walked out. Now, can you understand back then, the 60s, mm. of a black woman just walking out of a job and don't have no other job to, to buy? Back on, yeah. You're on your own. That's the kind of mum my mum was. Mm. So when eventually I played, started playing football, I, those stories, Paul, racism, it's going to hit you. It's what you do about it. You're going to have to walk away. So, so, so between the time that you went through that struggle, uh, seeing that your mum went through her struggle and you get into football, what were you like as a you at school? Oh, man. Um, you see, when we, you've been brought up, I've been brought up showing respect. I don't care where my mum said, wherever you go, you greet, you say good morning, you say good afternoon, you say good evening. No matter if the person don't like you, yep. you're, that's what you're showing. Yep. Yeah? Yep. They can't come away saying how your child is rude. Mm -hmm. Nobody. So for me, I wasn't a troublesome guy. Mm -hmm. Not a troublesome child at all. I always showed manners. It was like, I was always accepted by other parents. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't you be polite like Paul mm -hmm. every time? But for me, it was like, as I said before, I didn't have a male figure. Mm -hmm. And I needed that. I have an older brother mm. or dad around that I could share with. Uh, now, when I say that, coming from school, I got myself in a little trouble. I like to say I was able to go to my mum and say, boy, mum, there was a trouble at school and it was like this. They... But mum didn't look at it. She always thought you were the cause of it, it and told me off. So therefore, now I stopped. I didn't come to you no more. I'm keeping it to myself because you're going to look at me every time and say it's my fault when it wasn't my fault. So um, we didn't have that bond, that motherly bond at all. Gotcha. It wasn't like so. Growing up, it was difficult. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, as a you, um, if not kids, most of the kids did that. Where you sneaked out of the yard, you know what I mean, and went to a party because like every time you asked, it was no, 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 like, no, no, Tom, man. Yeah. I ain't saying I, I felt like I was a big man, but yeah. like, come on, man. Yeah. So, I remember yeah, cool. one, oh man, watch out, when you go in that, <laughs> I went one time where I sneaked out, come back, and I was thinking out getting away with it. I thought, yeah, yeah, man, this is good. But I sneak out one time, back in my window, and I see it, the window won't open. Oh. And I'm thinking, nah, it must be just stuck. But when you, you know, after 15 minutes, you realize, yeah. Yeah, you've yeah. been caught out here, yeah, exactly. but <laughs> Mom, lock what are you going to do? Lock, lock out. out. And you're another 10 minutes outside thinking of an excuse to say, why are you outside? Mm. You understand? Know yeah. That's how the fear factor for me, I was scared of my mum. I'm not going to lie to you. She had that fear factor yeah. with me and my sister. Yeah. And it was a case, boy, I remember where I went out, sneaked out a Saturday, didn't come back. It was late in the morning and I played my football. And I played football with this white guy who was manager and I respect him, rest in stove. Um, his name was Dish. Mm. I went straight to him and said, look, Dish, man, I ain't at home. I'm coming straight here and I sneaked out. I'm kind of trouble. He said, don't worry, leave that. 
let's pick up the rest of the boys, then we'll go home and pick up your boots. And I was like, yeah, but boy, they don't know. How am I going to get in this yard? Now, all the boys was in this van. Yeah, transit van. And I said, park up there, just don't call. And I walked up to the yard and I waited. <laughs> and so I tapped the door, like, you know when you're tapping and nobody, nobody's going to hear that. Because yeah. I was scared. Then, like, look, they're downstairs waiting for me. Hey, what? Tap that door, man. And then my mum come out and, trust me, I'm outside talking through the letterbox. Who is it? Uh, it's your son, mum. It can't be my son. My son is in his bedroom. No, mum, I sneaked out. You sneaked out? Why? I went to a party all the time, you know, talking through the letterbox. You know, yeah, no, oh, so you turned big man. No, no, I just wanted to go to a party, mum. So why did you come back? Um, I need my football boots. Oh, my <laughs> Boy, gosh. I was like, oh, you need your football boots. <laughs> yeah. This time, mum said, oh, is that, are you telling me no? So you're a big man, you want to sneak out, go on, but now you want your boots. Well, you best go and get your boots. And she went back into her room. And I'm like, I can't go back downstairs like that. That's oh, embarrassment. Lord. Well, I knew the front door was kind of loose. And I waited and I waited. And I just barged it with the shoulder and I went straight in. Boom, run the door, catch the boot, close the door, run downstairs, be calm and start walk oh to the van. Oh my, are you kidding like, you me? No, no black woman like that. I'm sorry, yeah? They don't Bro, you like brace that. the door. Brace the door, man. <laughs> Come down, save my boots, go into the van, thinking, yeah, everything's cool. But the man start pointing. What are they pointing at like that? And I turned around, my mum is in a 90. And she, you know back in then when you had the chopper, like you used to chop the chicken? Yeah, I remember. My mother had the chopper. You think you're bad? And she started chasing me, bro. Oh, bro, my. it was so bad. I said, yeah, start the van, start the van. Got in the van, whoosh, drove off. Now you can understand now, it's Sunday. But all I'm thinking is my mum. I can't play football probably. So two and two, <laughs> I'm on the pitch now playing football in Gunnersby. And the boys now are taking the living uh, pee with me. Candice, is that your mum? I'm turning around, oh man, stop that. <laughs> Every minute through the game, yeah? Can you understand? So, man on, mom on. Mom on, everything. <laughs> and I'm it's thinking, man why? On, on. Listening, to, I'm thinking, no, nah, man. Funny. So, for me, <laughs> growing up like that, it was a case of, you hear what now? A male figure, this. How did you get away with that Brother, in the end, This bro? is how I'm saying to you. I was thinking about it, how I was going to return. And this dropped off every lad that day, and he took me home to his how house. How old are you? Oh, man, I was about 13, 13, 14. Yes, he took me yeah. home. And he gave me Sunday dinner, and that's the first time I had any white man's Sunday dinner. But I had some roots. I thought, this ain't bad. <laughs> so, yeah, but you know, my head's still thinking, boy, I've got to go home. He said, I know you're thinking about it. Who took yeah. you to the house he in did, Fraser? Who was the coach? Let me tell you something. He went to the door. He said, wait in the van, and we'll talk to your mum. And I was like, my mum ain't gonna listen, man. She ain't. Let me tell you something. It must have been half an hour. And then he called me. I went to the door. My mum stood up there, and I'm expecting these licks. Got to your bed. I was um, stopped. Wow. I was like, me, mum, tell me to go to the bed. She ain't wow. give me licks. Wow. Bob. From that day, I respect this so much. And not, I'm not racing, but for white guy to have that time for me, yeah. I showed him respect because, you just, you just keep as I said, real. yeah, I wanted a mentor, I wanted to look after. Yeah, regardless of the colour. Yeah, he was there for me. Yeah, someone showed up for, for you. Yeah, and mum just understood then how important football was for me. Don't right. get me wrong, I still kind of strayed. Yeah, of course. Because I went, and I wasn't, the bad, as I said, the bad boy, but I was the lamb. Mm. I followed. Okay. You know them one day with okay. your follow yeah. and you didn't take a choice yeah. yourself? Like most youths, Yes. Bro. They're followers. I followers. And I mean, and I was the youngest in the group. And boy, at Tutu, we did the stupidness. We broke into this um, electrical shop. Time of night. Bam, had to hide till morning. Police were surrounding all around, driving about. Next thing we got up, thinking that it'd be all right. Anyway, Give me some caught. background on that. Bro. How did you get into that? Nah, Who were the guys? What was I'm going on? I'm not even that kind of guy, but like, because you want to be part of that 
firm or that gang, not gang, but you know what I mean? You yeah. had to go and follow and do one what of your own thing. You know what I mean? Feel like, like I wasn't, but I had to do it. I felt I had to do it to show them, I'm, yeah, I'm all right. But it was the wow. worst thing for me. That's wow. not my kind of thing. And obviously, first time I got caught. And by going to the court, the man, even the first time offence, the judge wasn't having it. He sent me down to Borsal, bruv. And I thought, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah, he sent me down to Borsal, first time offence. I've been good and I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. How many now, white guys were involved 50. in the well, move? There was no, nobody, no, nobody got caught. And the, I think the worst thing for it. What do you mean I no realized, one got caught? It was only me and I wouldn't tell nobody. What, what, I right, never, tell me about this move. Nah, it was an electrical shop. We broke into the back. Me and this other two guys, they went, never got caught. I got caught. How, how did they I go? Asked you, oh you my God, they was quick. Gone. Boom. I got caught. Surrounded police. Here you go. You fit the description. Did you run when they ran? Did you I go when they ran? I remember but we all separated. Don't get me wrong, we couldn't run together. Because when the police see three black guys together, hey, you on, that's you. It's simple as. So we tried to separate, fit the description. Here, where are you going? In the wrong place, wrong time. Whose idea was it? Oh, theirs. Don't get me wrong, not mine. I yeah. just followed. Okay. But I got caught. So what, they're older giving, than you? They were older than you and said, come they, they on, I'll bring you in on this Yeah, move. that's it. Don't get me wrong, I wanted to be one of the boys. What, what was you expected to get out of it? I, I don't know. More of a friendship that, yeah, you can rely on P. P's okay. all right. Okay. That kind of thing, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that was right. like a family for me. Okay. As I said, it was only mum, yeah. and I haven't got that male bond. Mm -hmm. So neither of them that looked after me. And don't get me wrong, I've got to say that they did. Because at times, they would say to me, when I wanted to join and go on, say, P, no, not this one. See. Yeah, what now? We know you're good. You got a talent. You're a footballer, and you. Okay, they it. they knew they, that. Trust me. So I that was, like, that was known with you even from yeah. early. And I was going like, come on, man. And I said, no, 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 not this. And I was like, for me to go in that one, I was persuasive. I said, look, come on, man, stop that. And See. I went. And I know, I have to wow. blame myself because wow. they didn't want me to go. Oh wow, that's. I understand deep. that. So, so olders that actually were. Trust me. Not trying to drag yeah, you but into the mess. I was in the local paper. I was local news, talented. But I didn't take that in. Mm. You know what I mean? So I knew that was more for me that was going on where I needed a mentor, a male figure to give me a direction. Wow. And I didn't have that. Now, when I say that, because every sport I went to, I was on my own. But every other kid had their family member with them. See. Had their dad with them, their mother with them. Wow. I'm on my own. But I stood out. I was the best player. Wow. And I come, their parents coming to me, boy, you, you're going to go. You're going to make it. Now, who do I want to see me? It's not my of mother. Of course. And my, but they're not there. Yeah. So when I'm coming home now, boy, mum had a great game. All right, so do your chores then. That's what I'm Bro. getting, the reaction. You don't, Bro. that's a feeling that no as a kid, this. you don't want to, Hold on, Mum, I want to show you how good I am. Yes. She Look at the trophy I got. Everybody's talking Everybody about does. me. So that's how the relationship was with my mum. Wow. And it was hard, I ain't gonna lie to you. But that ball so it opened my eyes, bruv. You understand you weren't alone with that though, innit? It no, was like it was. our generational thing, you know? Very. For us. For, it was yeah, our young generation. Boy, yeah. We did not get no big ups and respect from our parents nah. for being the best. The only thing you got. You didn't get that respect when you was good. But as soon as you was bad, oh my yeah, God, yeah, they would yeah, stamp on, yeah, you. Yeah, on you. And it just made you feel, oh yeah. God, when I do good, you don't yeah. say nothing. But as soon as I'm yeah. like, what? Oh, I'm the worst. You're no good. That's I don't it. know why you're born. Yeah. You're like your father. I'm like, what? Hey. This time, I didn't know what it looked like. I ain't gonna lie to you. She took out all the pictures, everything. If we didn't know what our father looked like. I said, cool. But this boy to, yeah, it woke me up, bro. Really? To yeah. Share that experience about the um, postal, man. Going in there, it's like first thing in the morning, people was in there, a vest and a jean, and walking out in the yard. And I'm thinking, why are they queuing up in the yard? That is cold, bro. Nah, I'm going and wash. So I start to walk in. So what are you looking at, man? So, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? I'm going to wash, why? So you go in the queue. I said, go in the queue, what? I get cold, easy. 
to know you go in the queue. Who are you telling me about going in the queue? I'm going in the hmm, Let me tell you something. Whoop! Down in the block, three days put on extended. Wow. That wake me up, bruv. No one's making, hey, what? You ain't taking no rules in here. They're ruling you, Paul. Right. This is no free, like, I like freedom. I like to be able to go to the newspaper shop and come back. This ain't no newspaper shop, bruv. This was folding up my clothes in a Tiny army potential, like jumper, That's jeans, it. shirt. And I was like, what's the man? No, I ain't gonna lie to you. I didn't like it. I was writing a letter to my manager, football manager. Please get me out of there. Please send, send him a letter. You know what I mean? I, I can do everything, but I just want to be here. Before you know it, I joined the team, the sports team that like, they play on a Sunday. And what it is, they play teams from outside. And the teams had to come inside yeah, yeah. in the unit. Now, for me, I'm going to the team thinking, you know what I mean? I met other black players, other white players that we played in this team. And this particular game, we won 10 0. And I scored nine of them. Uh -huh. I was like, yeah, yeah, we're killing it, killing it. <laughs> and from that, the guard said, Boy, you're good. And for me, said to me, Trey, he said, Why don't you go? for trials at Chelsea. And I'm thinking, Chelsea, you have yourself, man. They're not good. Because at that time, I used to support Leeds United. That's how old are you? Was. How old are you? When You're you talking now, I was 15, 16 years old. OK. Yeah, in Porto. But I didn't know it. After four months, I was released. And you know when you always got a second mother? Yeah. She's your aunt, but she's like your second mother. Yeah. She yeah. gives you reasoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gives you encouragement. She Who said, was Paul. That? And that was Auntie Stephanie. Lovely. And I've got to say, man, she told me, Paul, now you've come out, yeah, forget that behind you. It's now to take your football serious. And I said, You're right. That's what she said to you. Yeah. That's where my strength was in my football. So now, that's what I've done. It wasn't the best. Now, take my football serious. So I had to find a little job part time. And um, my manager, who I was talking about, Colin yeah. Barnes, he brought me straight down to Hill in the Borough. Now, at that time, there was Southern League, there was semi pro Hill in the Borough. Okay. Is that the so team that, that you were playing off with. for? Semi, as semi pro back in the day, was very big. Okay. You paid, but not as paid like professionals, okay. like you pay. Yeah. You only train Tuesdays and Thursdays, yeah. and you play on a Saturday, unless you had a game in the week. Okay. But um, it was funny because I went straight in to the youth team. And when we came in, it was a cup game. And boy, they had some, the parents had armed house. Hold on, this guy just come in and he's playing before my child. And Barnes just said, look, because he's that effing good. And if you don't like it, you know where to go. I was like, wow, that's kind of support. But, but yeah. Wow. Let me tell you something. Wow. I was only in the, the youth team for about a month. Next thing you know, I was in the first team at 16 years old. You I was like, well, it was nervous because these players now had, had retired from professionals, you know what I mean? Okay. So they were still playing. So they were, for me, this is grassroots. Mm. I'm learning from here. I'm a young black boy. And I remember distinctly, don't get me wrong. If you remember growing up, you remember Woolworths? Yes, I mean. Mother, you know oh, every black parent, if I'm sure, if I'm yeah. going to be honest. Yeah. We lived by wolves. Straight. We had school pants, mm -hmm. the shirt, the oh. trousers, train. We had plimsolls at the time. You understand me? From wolves. Yeah? Plimsolls. So right now, I had Winfield boots. Yeah, wolves boots. My mother, yeah, that's all she could afford. It's 14 pounds, nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, for mum, she would tell me, you have to clean your boots. Because if you don't clean them, you're not going to play football. Because if you don't clean them, they get hard and they yeah. bust up. Polishing and cleaning your yeah, boots. Yeah, I had to clean them. And I mean, shine them. Yeah. Wash them, dry them, and shine. That's it. Trust me. So I, for me, my mum showed me a lot. And that's why I, I'm definitely independent. Mm. She showed me how to cook at the age of 12. Oh, boy. When, your mother, when I tried to show my son, boy, my mother brought me in the kitchen. You've got to understand. There you go. Talk it, man. In the kitchen at 12 years old, sit down. What? Watch me. Boy, brown the chicken. I went, what? 
Boop, 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 this brown, boop, 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 yeah? Train the water. Clean Put it. the seasoning. Hey, yeah, you're going to clean it. Add to do everything. Everything. Add your, your carrots, add your mm -hmm. potatoes. What? Mm -hmm. And then the dumpling. I went, okay, that was soup. I said, wicked. That was it. Mm -hmm. Two weeks' time. Here what? Make the soup. I'm going to work. What? Mm -hmm. Just like that, you know? Yeah. By instinct. Because you have to show me. You can show me anywhere. One time. Yeah. I'll remember it. Yeah. Brother, I cooked that soup. And let me tell you something, that soup come out bad. Easy. I mean, not bad as bad, Easy. bad as good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. That made me start invent. I start cooking cookies. <laughs> I cut flour. Yeah. Bakes. Yeah. I was cooking bad. Wow. So I was blessed with that. And I'm That's so glad hard. that you told me. But That's hard. I'm going back when mum bought Did you enjoy the doing it as I well, did. Pete? I love cooking. Because I love being in the kitchen, you know. I love. I was always I've watching been doing my mum. Chicken shows, like yeah. on the fa Facebook live. Yeah. And I'm cooking like pork belly, my chicken, my pork steak. Easy, I'm cooking it because my art was always seasoning. Okay. Season the night before, make nice, that sore nice, cut. Nice, yeah? nice, and nice. then you fry that, trust me, there's nothing wrong with it's that. That's awesome. I didn't know you could love, bag out the cooking. Oh, but I love that. Ask, yeah, you can lovely. ask Gary. Gary will tell you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you need your cooking jar. I said, nah, man, stop that. <laughs> but when I'm like, going back to what we're saying, my yeah. mum, those boots, and I remember the manager when I joined the first team, he said to meet him, down in West Drayton, and I'll tell you where, oh my God, what was the guy sports shop? Perry, Steve Perryman, yeah. back in the day, he used to play Tottenham, had a few sports shops. Yeah. He said, meet me there. I thought, why am I meeting this guy? And this was like training, Thursday. He meet me there, he said, yeah, go and pick yourself a, a pair of boots. What? Now, I'm hearing a man and it's a white man telling me to go and pick a pair of boots. And I'm thinking, oh, gosh, man, I don't want to pick so expensive because I don't have that money, yeah. you know what I mean? And I'm going there, and these boots, I'm talking about, there were some boots, Adidas King, Puma, Puff, everything. It was like, whoa. It was heaven, I picked it? the cheapest boots, and I come to the till. And he looked at me, what are you doing? What, why? I should pick some decent boots. What is that? What? I went back. Boots that cost eighty pound, you know. Back that then was nineteen money. Bro. That's like two hundred and fifty pounds now. Bro, now. Exactly. Yeah, brother. I picked this Puma Kings, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Must have been so gas to put yeah. those on. What, brother? That would clean every day. Every day. I had studs on that boots, and it made me play better. But back then, the difference was those pictures weren't the best of pictures. They weren't. Today's pictures uh, yeah. are like pool exactly. table. You're heavily in it. Yeah. So to come from that, as you said, grassroots, and then to join professionalism, proper pitch, I'm, I'm in heaven, bro. Yeah, man. So that's where bringing up, because it was like, don't get me wrong. Had your mum come to 18, any matches yet? No, still this. At 18, I went to trials. I went to trials to... Southampton, I went trials to Wimbledon, I went trials to West Brom, and nobody said nothing. And I'm thinking, boy, I might have not that good then. When I mean nobody said nothing. Chelsea coming, trials there for the week. I'm nervous because, boy, I'm seeing them man on TV now. I'm standing next to them man. Oh my God, man. Look at Joy, Stephen King. But I'm going back, and still, nobody said nothing. Who were you seeing that you looked up to? Brother, the person I was seeing at that time was Cyril Regis. Because mm. you've got to understand, where Cyril Regis come, he used to play at, at Hayes in Harlem. Mm -hmm. That's where they, you know what I mean, the semi-pro, yeah. where I started. Yeah. You've got Ferdinand, he played at Southall. And here I am at Hillingham. Wow. So this is where they started to grow up. Trust me, that alone, you don't know, that first year when I signed Chelsea and I met, at a hotel in Shepherd's Bush, John Barnes and Cyril Regis. You don't know, I'm a little boy. I, feel, I was at all, bro. Totally. I'm seeing them man like this. This is man, you, these are my peers. Yeah. And right now, I'm standing right next to you. How I, and you know, we didn't talk shop. And I know we were going through the same thing yeah. of racism, 
from my own fans, mm. not just all of them, majority. And yeah. I know Barnes was going through, and I know Cyril, yeah. but we didn't talk about it. Really? That was the one thing I got to say, because everybody asked me and thinking, do you not talk about it? I said, no, because we, we already knew. We already knew. That wasn't a discussion, we knew what was going yeah. on. Let's talk about football, man. Oh, Where are we going? Geez. How are we doing? And I was at so you know, at all. Oh, here we got Barnsley. Because wow. what are we going to get out of talking about? Yeah, it? we know what we're doing. We all we've know the world that, that we're in. We've grown in it. You know we've that. We've got NF man, we've got man driving past. Thank you. What a exactly. Countries. That word. Like. And I say that word, it was a word that upset me so much. Really? Gollywog. Yeah, Gollywog one. Because they used to call me that. You know, there's only two black families in our state. Mm, I was going to ask you about that. Only black family in the state. Yeah, I was so I used to play outside. On my road. Trust me, bro. I go outside, we're playing football. Mm. But who stand out? Bro, I was... Man, them boys wanted to kick me. It was like, you know, let me tell you something. And how I describe this. When I say kick me up, it was like a slinging. Back in the day, like they, they would have loved that. Sling me and whoop. That's how bad it was. Mm. Oh, kicking me. And this is concrete and not no grass. Yeah. It's like front gate, concrete, road. But what I had to do to jump and avoid those tackles. Yeah, man. Golly walk, it, nigga. It, yeah, because it's those a chance words. to get back at you. Brother, through, it was... Through the small. It was upsetting. It was upsetting, man. Because who are you going to complain to? Oh, well, who can I? Mark, there was we one guy... We going to complain to the ref or complain to... Nah, the they weren't the ref. This is World Cup. You oh, right. outside, so you represent. I was yeah. in Brazil. I'm on the Brazil. Yeah, Palais. yeah. I Simple as. So everybody was on, but yeah, I'm yeah. busting it up. But one boy took it to the limit, and he called me the N word and called me the word. You got it. And there was this guy called Chris, big fat guy. And by I didn't know that he supported Chelsea at that time, but when he heard, this is his friend calling me. He said, "What did you call him?" And they respect him, trust me, he was a big lad, Chris. Let me ever hear you call, Paul, if they ever call you that word again, tell me. Tell me. Wow. He was serious. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've got somebody to protect me. Wow. Yeah? From that day, watch her. They never said a word. Oh man, you don't know. Wow. Yeah, I, I, trust you me. Need. So what it is, it's about people speaking up yeah it's about people but, having a voice come instead on, of leaving it and being quiet you got like you said nothing on your state you're the only black guy yeah man and you're playing with the white rest of the white guys mm. and i got on with them because yeah. they went near my school yeah but their older brothers are like boy the violin i remember when to go to my first football mm. game 12 mm. years old and asked my mother, and my mum heard about hooliganism. She didn't want me to go. And the white guy said, look, mum, I will look after you. Don't worry, I had to beg her. I said, yeah. Went to the game, QPR. No word, as you say, soft history <laughs> on. And they was playing West Ham. And let me tell you, the turf, I was like jumping up and trying to, you know, you know how it was, you wouldn't see. It was yeah, like, what? Yeah, trying to... So two, two, man, that guy come and tell me, oi, your dad ain't playing with too well, is he? So I'm thinking, how do you know my dad? Because my dad plays cricket. He don't play football. So I'm about to ask him, what were you for? And the guy well, asked me and said, Paul, mm -mm, leave that. Let's go. You know who you're talking, referring to? Clyde Best. Was on the pitch. Clyde Best played for West Ham. He was the He's best black man. The second black. Yeah, violent, bro. He's violent. That's what I'm saying. I was like, like why? Racism, what? Let me tell you something, when I was playing at Hill and Bar, and I'm going to and fro because my first instinct, well, first thing of racism was playing Hastings. Apart Dover. from the regular everyday yeah. life and the end. Because the everyday life was like, like you said, if you saw a car in the evening and it went past and it slowed down, you slowed down. Trust me. Because those were skinheads coming out of that car. Oh, and to be any black boy, Paul, and at that time, I'm with my sister. Yeah, yeah. So you know who's going to come first? Oh, the straight, straight. Yeah, June, let's go. Yeah. We'll go the long way. There you go. Yeah? yeah? But you know your mother give you a time. Mm -hmm. Not one second, yeah. not two seconds after. Yeah, that yeah, time yeah. you got to be, be in. Be there. And you're telling them, mum, what the yeah. situation? You don't want to hear that. Don't want to hear that. 
I told you to be. Yeah. So that's crushed. Not going out again. But you're thinking wow. to avoid that. Brother, you, man, that's how fun it was. Some Those kids of today don't know. You really hard. helped for me to just realize I'm telling how you, bro. hard I'm been telling it was story. that we were coming up. And, and, and it's difficult. For my, for my um, Caucasian mm -hmm. friends and compatriots, right. they have no understanding nope. of, and I think it's really important that everybody understands they're people, down. their oppression. Everybody understands the disenfranchised. Right. Instead of thinking they've got a chip on their shoulder, they're this Thank and that. That's just, the one. Just listen. Hear what life no. is like every day that molds your way of thinking. And hear how you've also been enslaved mentally That's the to one. feel and think about someone hey. of colour the way that you did because it was projected in you, it was taught to it you, was, it was shown to you through films, mm. uh, adverts, oh, movies, your, your, your parents probably taught you stuff like yeah. that. So in your head, this is real stuff. Yeah. These guys ain't as good as us. No. They're not clever. They're dirty. They're this, they're that. That's what they're telling us. And I was like, I think today's lads or today youngsters are alienated because I think they fear more of being stopped and searched than carrying a knife today by the police. And this is how I feel because back then we had no trust for the police. It's no. a but it hasn't been rebuilt. Though. It hasn't. From how long? Yeah. From 1962 I'm born. Yeah. 72 I'm 10 years old. Going on 50, yeah. brother, I'm walking home. I'm not paying no money to nobody. Yeah. You're stopped. Here we go. What's your name? Where are you coming from? Who's coming home? Where are you going? I'm going home. Where's home? Hold on. You're getting me upset. Where was your now. fear? What was your worst nightmare getting tripped by people? Wasn't it getting nicked and taken in the station brother, and then not being that was seen the one again? When I was taken to the station, but I don't want to be telling my mum that I'm in the station because she'll look at you, you must have did something wrong. No, mum, I didn't. Didn't get it. Oh, they took me station. I was in there till 12 o'clock, but no charge, you know. No charge. All I heard, the clock, the door opened, three men come in and gave me a hiding. Oh, yeah, they gave me a hiding and then set me off home. Wow. Go on. And you don't know how vexed oh, and upset. And I've gone home to, and you know, where you been? Um, that's by a friend, mum. That's I'm, how do you lost process that, all of that? You don't know trauma and, and, no and anger. Disrespect. I was in threatening mode. I wanted to see those people. Mm. I wanted to know that you work at the station. I'm gonna get you. That's how. And that yeah. wasn't a right thought for me. No. A young girl. Yeah. Why was I thinking like that? Yeah, yeah. But that hurt. Of what happened? It yeah. hurt. Yeah. I young know, hurt. So you now mentally, emotionally, I've seen this. Physically. We ain't got no trust for you. Yeah. You have not built no trust for us. That's right. That's so right. why are you going to think today these youngsters are going to have trust for you now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is where I am. Yeah, and then when I, when I have conversations and speak to communities, no, bro. when the same community you have showed no respect bad and apples. no love to. That's all I'm seeing, bad apples. No, I'm going to be honest, they're not all that. No. But there's some bad apples Never in there. Never would I say and that. And that's all the one we get apples. caught by. Those are the, yeah, there's enough bad apples to oh ruin my the gosh. whole force. Yeah, of course there is. They know that. So how are they force. gonna do that? That's what they need to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got some ideas. Go. Uh, you need a separate governing body there you go. to govern that body. That's I'm got nothing it, to do with nothing. They just govern what you're doing and they hold you accountable. Yeah. So That's I'm what needs to happen. I've been doing this for how long and I think for me, obviously not having the relationship with my mum, keeping things up inside of me, because you know how that Caribbean force was, they would tell you, your business stays in these four walls. Yeah? Mm. You don't tell nobody. And yes. I'm like that, I'm like, yeah, Paul, you all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah I'm cool, you know? Yeah. I ain't all right. I want to talk, but mm. my mum tell me not to say yeah, nothing. Not to say nothing. But this is all, mm. right? Bro, I'm getting angry for no reason. This and it's is, not your fault. This is so And real, I pull, you what? I said, what? And I realized, I had to apologize. Sorry, it wasn't you. It's just me. And I, now nah, I pull. Let me tell you something. I grew up with all that. How did that affect? Did, what, oh. did, what did football do? Did football give you a release? Or did you see some of that shit come out in football? Football definitely gave me the release because 
it was one is what I wanted to succeed yeah. for my you know my dream. But at the same time, I kept a lot. When receiving that racism, when I know I'm not a person to be quiet, I'm a very quick tempered person. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised that I never lashed out. Aye. Brother, when that first debut against Crystal Palace, I'm not willing to realize, sorry. Yeah. And um, I was excited, I'm not lying to you. I mean, I had seven months to prove myself. That was the contract I was given at started. Really? So in four months, yeah. Well, that was the the contract? That was the main you seven months yourself. I had to prove myself. In four months... Not that we're in... signing you no. because we've got full faith in you that you could we've deliver. Got seven months. Do you know how much, what that says? Above. And, and like, yeah. like I, I feel like in all my experience in life, like as a band with, with black skin, mm. you know, you have to always be proving yourself that you're better that, than. Yeah. When, when you're, the, you're the same, just like the, 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 your, your white compatriot next to you, you've got the same gifts, same talent. I have to talent, prove myself. But you have to prove yourself. Bob, I was in the first team after four months. Yeah. And I know the, the youth, like, not the reserve players, that had been there for years mm -hmm. were envy. Don't get me wrong, I took to I ain't bothering you. I know the direction, I know where I want to be. Yeah. But I've come there in four months and I'm in the first team. Here what? Paul, your sub. What? Yeah, good Crystal Palace. Oh, your sub. Bro. Bro, you yeah, got me here. But bro, bro, I don't care, fly in, come on, give me the support. I found everybody. I'm not angry. Come on, man. I remember going in that coach and I'm buzzing, I'm like, yeah. Was mum there? Mum went there. Let me tell you how that got. <laughs> and before you start, before when I signed for charity, and John Neal, bless his soul, gave me an opportunity. We're going to sign you for the remaining seven months. I found my best friend. I found my liar. I found my sister, because she was my rock. Mm -hmm. And June said, God, I'm proud of you, Paul. Proud of you. I know where you've been. Thank you. I found my best mate, George. Go on, my son, Ricky. I got to find mum. Mum, guess what? What? I've done it. What? I'm a professional footballer. So what? All right, mummy, bye. That's her attitude. That was her attitude. Not, well done, son. Oh my God. No. That was her. You know what? Uh, I can't take no further than that. Uh, I, well, I've, got, I've just got to do this myself. And no word of a lie, I've had um, two documentaries that have come out. My documentary and um, Out Your Skin with um, Ian Wright done the presenting. My mum saw that. My mum saw that. And she didn't realise what I was going through. And when she came, she apologised to me. It was emotional. I'm so sorry, Paul. I didn't know you were going through that. Yeah, it was, it had me. Because I, I wasn't able to tell you. Because I, was, I didn't know I had to talk to you, mum. And this is what I was going through. But when she was like, God, I'm so sorry, I was like, whoa. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I was chown up. I didn't know what to do. Oh, so, you know what I mean? For that. Do you know what, bro? So much of us are carrying so much bitterness. Well, oh, come on, man. All it is, is that the person just don't know. And we know they haven't given you the chance. We know they haven't stopped for a minute to let you communicate. Mm. But they don't know. Fully. They I'm don't telling. understand. And yeah, they just need so... Instead of carrying so much hate, venom and anger, sometimes we got to put it down to, at some point, I hope they wake up and realise. But right the now, thing, man. maybe it's not that it's me and it's not personal. It's just that you... You're ignorant no and don't understand. Understanding. And I didn't realise, I was thinking, all I could take in is what my mum went through and her stages of racing. Here I am now in the situation I've been asked to go and get warmed up. I'm thinking, yes, I'm stretching. And then I hear, oi, Gollywog, sit down. I'm thinking, boy, Crystal Palace fans, them really tough. Ignore that, Paul. They ain't gonna put me off my game. Hey, Wog, you knew it? Go on. Nah, and nobody saying nothing. Come on, man. Wow. This time I got my back in, I don't know who. Wow. Boy, it went worse. Bob, I had to turn around because I said, no, what, go on, no, what, wait, what? And when I saw, it wasn't Crystal Palace fans. It was my own fans that were racially abusing me. Wow. 
and that shook me up. When I mean shook me, I was like, but brother, I'm playing the same shirt that you're supporting. What? Wow. Brother, I didn't even want to take the tracksuit off. Go on, Paul, get on it. If I wanted to tell him I don't want to go on, but I couldn't tell him that, because yeah. that would be full. I took the tracksuit off and I waited. I hugged the line. I didn't go nowhere. I got the ball, pass it back. Got the ball, pass it back. I'm waiting for the referee. Blow that whistle, please. Wow. It affected your game. Yeah, man, it did. I don't care. I went, as soon as he blew that whistle, I ran straight in the changing room. And I, let me tell you something. You know, when we go in, we have banter. And the yeah. game after the game, we have banter. Yeah. We talk about, oh my God, yeah. you see what that went down? Oh, no. Let me tell you something. The quietest change room you would ever see. The boys came in there because they heard it. Fans were that close. Nobody could say, are you all right, Paul? It would have been a stupid question. The only person that come up to my manager, John Young, in the corner, to Paul, I don't know how much you'll be thinking. I don't know how you're feeling at this moment. But at this time, those same ignorant people are the ones who are paying your wages. What are you going to do? You're putting it on me, bro. Brilliant. You're putting it on me. Because right now, I left that day. I don't even know how I got home. All I had was phone calls telling me, Paul, why do you want to play for a racist side like that? Why do you want to play for them? And I'm trying to explain. It's not the club. It's just some ignorant fans. I don't care. Why are you going to play? So my thought now is, if I leave and go to a next club, and the same thing happens to them, same what's that going to do? I said, no, 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 man, you ain't gonna take my dream away. I've come too far. Well, uh, you don't know how long I had to play for that. After the seven months, don't get mine, played a couple of games, I got a new three-year contract. For three years, you know, I took this racist abuse. Home and away games. From who? From my fans, from my own fans. Which Not fans? all of them, my own Chelsea fans. Chelsea fans Chelsea for three fans. years? For three so years. So for the seven months, they said, so, yep. We're going to sign you. And, yep. Yeah, well, you're For the three years, I was getting racist abuse from the majority of my own fans. OK, tell me what the club's doing. Tell me what the teammates are doing. Good question. Because um, the club, and they know now, they didn't do enough. Nobody <sighs> from authority, nobody from the came and asked me, Paul, how are you doing? Knew it was wrong. Yeah, no. And stood by. The only person. And nothing. And that must have been the third where we got promoted. And we had a flux of new players. And the person I linked with was Pat Nevin. We linked with Pat. Pat from Scotland, great winger. He's on the right, I'm on the left. We combinated well. But we played Crystal Palace again. And I'm receiving the same racist abuse. Now, this is when the game was just being televised, started to be televised. And Pat scored the only goal. So they wanted the interview. So Pat, about the goal. I said, no, no, no. Let me tell you something. I'm not talking about this game. I'm talking about the racist abuse that Paul Cannaval received. It's a disgrace. And from the fans itself, brother, nobody's done that. I'm like, Pat, what are you doing, bro? Mm, wow, well, you're supposed that's a, to be Yeah, just neutral. Brother, he got in trouble from my own chairman. Oh yeah, told him off, don't be doing that. But Pat didn't care. He's an outspoken person. He got in trouble? Yes. The chairman said, don't do For that. Speaking about the right to be able I to go and play your game a human being. being abused. That's what. And I, I, to me and him was like that, and we're still like that. He's patron to my foundation, so... And that was the first so of my teammates. So when and somebody wrong, puts doing the right thing right. in front of their own needs. So Trust me. It, it risks him and how he's looked at, yep. maybe being picked in the team and if yep. he doesn't comply. Trust me. It's a bit like what Ali done. You know, he said. When he said, listen, bro, I, I ain't fighting because these yeah. men ain't troubling me. They're you troubling you. My own exactly. people are troubling me. So that's where the problem is. And Pat smoke out. See, these are the people we remember in life, the ones that were willing to risk everything for what's right. 
And Pat is one of those persons. There's not many people like that, <coughs> is there? No, no, no. And don't get me wrong, I love my teammates. Yeah. They were sports. But I suppose they were scared of the camouflage with the people up top. Can you so imagine they said, if they did stay together? Brother, and stuck together and said, we are not going to stand for well, this. Well, if it stood. And we are not going to allow our teammate to continue being abused when he's a valued part of our team. See, Can you, you imagine that, that? Mark? Because if that did occur and stunted from back then, this race would not be going, we'll be going on right now. We didn't have nobody. No we way. didn't have no organisation to kick it out, show red, um, racing them the red car. We yeah. didn't have none of that. Yeah. yeah? So who's supposed to look after us? And not the FA? You're not here, not So I'll be honest with you, Paul. We don't need kick it out. We don't need all these different organisations. We just need the people in football mm -hmm. that are playing to have a voice and speak up. And everybody has a voice. Footballers, well, we ain't playing no football. You'll be saying If that. you ain't going to respect every single one of our players, why should we? If the black guy no. walks off, the yeah. whole team walks off. You play together, you walk off together. You see, when I say that, and when that was discussed, Paul, what would you do? Boy, if today's football, I'm walking off. But Paul, then you're defeated. You're letting them win. Really? I'm sorry. How do I let how them you, win? How do you let them win? They don't get what they, they want. They don't want to go. All they care come about off. is the money, the football and the television. All they're worrying about. And if they're true supporter, because not every supporter is like that. They're the ones that have been hurt. Hold there on, There you man. go. I come in to see football, out. but you as my team fans are basically abusing. Uh -huh. Nah, we need to get you out. Right, right. Of our club. Because you're spoiling the fact that's that I can't watch that's my what Saturday I keep telling night, them. Saturday football. They're not Sunday doing football. nothing. You're not punishing. You're giving a little fine. Mate, come back again and do the same. So there I'm getting go. hurt. I said, hold on. How many times has this got to go on? Now, today's standard football, for me, is what's going on now with the social uh, media. Now, you know, the racism now is going on. Bad in the social media. Terrible. Why is that going on? So who's supposed to scrutinise those? Who's supposed to monitor those? Now, it's happened more than once, happened more than twice. Brother, it's been on for the next few years. Sorry. The other day, the boys, they were saying about, oh gosh, you know what? What was the one? Boycott. We're boycotting all social Who's media that? for four, five, four days. I was like, boycott what? No, not me. I'm, no, I'll do it. I went still tweeting. Everybody boycott. So, sorry, let me say something. Have we done something wrong? I don't think so. The person that allowed to be sending those racist abuse on social media, social media supposed to be scrutinizing this and monitoring this. That ain't supposed to come true, as far as I'm concerned. They ain't gonna lose no money out of that pocket, so why should we be boycotting it? No, I'm sorry, hear what now? Government, step in. You? Why are you stepping in? Do you your see job. what's going on? Yeah. You're not doing your job. Right now, we're going to find you big time and we're going to close you up for four or five days. That's correct. That's you, what should you, be you happening. Lose but you ain't doing it. Because you're allowing, when, when um, Sainsbury's done the black, the black family for the advert, uh, isn't it a family? Thank you. Regardless of their colour, it's a so family. What? Why should it bother you if, if they're doing a Christmas advert? Why? Is? What, isn't there black people in your country having families? Thank you. So when so, I saw all this? All I see is, you know, blackberries. We're going to be calling them blackberries from now on. Uh, I'll be boycotting Sainsbury's from now on. For the the comments was I like, like you know, oh my gosh. Mark, and people, well. people are trying to deny that this country no, has got a serious problem. It was offensive. And it, this it, it institutionalized was racism it was that's already been Perfect. shown clearly in it the Met. Hurtful. And, you know, yeah. don't matter how much you try and say, oh, we're working on stuff. No, man. Bruv, how are how you many... when you're not demonstrating that you've got rid of yeah. police officers that are undermining your force and, and not, not doing probably... what they're sworn no, in to do? not doing. It's gone on far too long. And this is where I am at this moment. And All right, you talked about yeah, I, to be honest, I shouldn't be here. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had a serious illness. Yeah, bro. Um, you are a warrior. And boy, I ain't lying. To you. This this illness I had in 2017. Same illness. It was a, a bowel obstruction. And 2017, I was in a coma for nine days. That's how bad. 
the operation on foot. This is my concern, because I love doing hospitality. This is why I said you come back from, you face right. death. And the man said, Paul, don't worry, it's a three hour operation. You'll be back, you'll watch football tomorrow. I said, look, I've got to go and, he said, no, no, nine hours it took. Nine hour operation? Nine hour, that was 2017, when I was in a coma. And it was bad. So boy, this time round, yeah, after the pandemic with the COVID, and like, I remember I caught the COVID in December, went home to isolate, January, get myself better, then boom, the pain. I said, I know that pain. Let me take some paracetamol and go sleep. But this pain ain't gone. Six o'clock, nine o'clock, I phone the ambulance. Now, 999, they don't want to know. Phone 119. What? Phone 119, right away. Gone downstairs to meet him. Come up. Said, sorry, what do you need? I'm in there, my phone, and my coat, and my team. Carry me to the hospital. Shout to Westminster. I'm in there, man. Please give me something for the pain. Said, two, two. 12 o'clock now. I'm having the CT scan. At 12 o'clock in the night. I've had the CT there. scan. They've had that come back. Mr. Cannibal, we're operating now. No, what do you mean operate? We've seen something we don't like. We're operating now. I'm on my own. I've had to talk to my sister. Yeah, June. I'm a, I ain't even had time. I'm down in the operating table, boy. I'm, I'm just like this. I'm just seeing wow. nurses around me and I'm saying, Paul, you're in good care. Have they explained Don't to you what worry. they've seen? They've seen no, it's caused you to that's be worried. not even what they just said. They've seen something we need to operate now. I'm like, what? Yeah, what like what, mate? No, you're not you hearing me. You know what I mean? Me. 2-2. All I know, at 1, 2 o'clock, they're operating on me. And I'm in the ward. I see you. And I'm not going to lie to you. This is how it went, Mark. At first, I was in so much pain, so much pain. And I went and talked to the, no, I tell you, no, this is how it went. First off, I had the proper surgeon who took out the bowel, cleaned it up proper, like gave it an MOT, everything, boop, and put it back in. That was it, sewed me back up. Went back to ICU. Oh, had a high temperature. They didn't know where the temperature was coming from. What's going on? I mean, blow it up. Take him back down and said, operate again. Open me up. Found out I've got two liters of blood in my stomach. Uh, Have to suck that out. Don't know where the leak's coming from. Uh, Sold me back up. Got a top surgeon to do a keyhole. A keyhole, he found where the leak from. Next thing now, I've got a cyst. I've got blood clots. Uh, we need to operate. We can't open them up again. Not a third time. That's mad. Baba, let me tell you something. I'm sedated, you know. I'm like this. Until I went. <coughs> I coughed. It opened up the wound. Oh, please. The wound opened up. Oh. They went like, Oh, my God. This is an opportunity. Let's go in. Went in again. Take out the seat. Like that. Black. Scratch. Boom, 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 boom. Couldn't sew me back up. I was too swollen. So now, I'm like this on the bed. Ooh. Wrapped up in wound, things open. I'm literally like vomiting now in my own wound. Oh. Yeah, you gotta clean that acid up oh. quickly out of the wound. That's for four days before they could sew me up. I'm telling you now, I'm in the bed. I'm like this, I'm in my own ward now, in my own room. And I'm like, I can't take this pain. And I call the nurse. So the they nurse. giving you morphine? The morphine, I had morphine like this, but morphine ain't doing nothing no more. Oh my gosh. So I'm talking now. The nurse, please, can I see the doctor? Can I ask what for? I said, no, it's personal. Paul, what's wrong? I'm going to ask you, can you put me to sleep? I'm, I'm not talking about, go sleep, sleep, you know. I'm talking about taking my life. Me, I'm a person that you've wow. got resilient. I'm telling you wow. to make me to sleep. Wow. I can't take the pain no more. Paul, sorry. Let's talk to somebody tomorrow and, and do, you know what I mean? I said, no, you're not hearing me, man. I can't take this no more. 
That's how bad I was going. Wow. Peter. Now, this is only, I ain't told so many people. This is where you're saying. Like, oh, I have my mum, my sister, my partner, other people know. And I was like, boy, what am I in? And all this time, like, you, you got what I'm saying, I'm sedated. I was sedated for six weeks. I'm in dream world. And I think that was giving me the strength to be where I was. I'm not lying to you. Mark, I was in a dream. I was in the Caribbean, bro. I was in the Caribbean with small waters, clear blue waters. I was holding party on a boat. I was nearly hijacked on a, on a fishing boat. I was nearly robbed on the, on the plane from Gold Billion. Yeah, bro, these dreams are real. Thank you for making me laugh. And I'm hearing all in time and I'm in my ears. Paul, Paul, <laughs> do you know where you are? I said, hell yeah, I'm in the Caribbean with you. This time I'm still in Chelsea, Westminster, hospital. Brother, you don't know, bro. Oh, I feel that was the strength, why that kept me going. I'm not really lying to you. Cute. When I come out, because all this time they're talking to my sister. Remember of the COVID, yeah. nobody can come in and see me. So they're talking to everything that was going on. And when you had the doctor come up to your bed, every one of them, Paul, I'm going to be honest, we didn't think you would come through this. What? Serious. We didn't think you'd make it. Every one of them, Bob. The third that come there. We didn't think you went to. Wow. Oh. And they're telling my sister. So my sister's there in my airport can you hear me? And I'm holding the nurse's hand. As for some reason I can hear something and I squeeze her hand and I'm like, all this I've been told, I didn't know. And I'm thinking, boy, how am I still here? I look at the ceiling, I look, I'm looking like for somebody above here. How am I still here? You're not hearing me. Why? Now that's why I say to you, I'm going to take this platform. And I mean, you mentioned platform earlier. I'm using this platform. Now they're going to hear me speak. Yes, I was speaking out before, but not as how I feel now. Yeah? I'm not, boy, I'm, I'm so bored. We've got a t-shirt. It's here, bro. Got to yeah. tough, man. I'm telling you. What's the vision, bro? Brother, would you wanna, we've got the t-shirt now. Would you want to be telling people what's the My message? My campaign is racism, man. My foundation is helping us youth, motivating. We never had no mentors. I'm here providing that. Yeah. I'm going to school now, talking about the racism, how it affects you, yeah? How it affects us, how it will affect you. you there's different cultures now. Understand them. Yeah. So now I want that curriculum for me to go in them schools, yeah? Because we don't have that. These are the youths that need to know, the youngsters need to know early. When I come back to Chelsea, don't get me wrong, after all, the fans coming up to me, apologizing. Paul, I'd like to apologize. Why? I was one of the guys that used to race the abuse. Straight. What? Now, I'm thinking, what do you expect there me to say There were young guys now? like UP. Brother, man. They were your age. They were you dads. I mean? They were bro sons, yeah. brothers. Exactly. And they were teaching their children who were coming that's up time. to do the same. So we got to know, understand, that's why I got to break out and make this platform be heard. I'm sorry, man. Right now, since that's why I got upset about the boycott of, nah, we're not, all right. We're there doing, all right, the kneel before the game. I think now it's gone on far too long. Yeah? Would you want, would, would you want you the FA to I don't look. Would you want the FA to do Look, come on. And I, the, the situation, George, what's his name? Floyd. Floyd. Now, don't get me wrong. We're kneeling. Now, that kneel has come from Martha Luther King, yes? That's where this kneeling come from. But you're telling me you're kneeling by George Floyd. Hold on. George Floyd wasn't the one who kneeled. He was kneeled upon by a white policeman who killed him. Why are you kneeling? Sorry, do more than that. FA, do more than that. Premiership, do more than that. You've been having this chance for how long? You've got BT, you've got Sky. In the stadium, now don't get me wrong, it's not just a football thing, it's a society thing. But in football, we've got the connection of Sky, BT, cameras all around in the ground that you can't focus on where there is trouble or where is there racial behaviour. Yeah, racist behaviour. You're telling me you can't see that. Because you can you see that and away. you can get that person out of the stadium because the people now... We say, yeah, he was. Because the fans don't want it no more. The fans are spoken now. 
They don't want this back in their stadium. They don't want this in their club. But you cannot do more. But you ain't doing no more. All because of this. No, nah, man. I'm Mind stopping it. I'm not having it. I'm not. No, nah, so don't love it. not doing enough. No. Nah. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm not hearing that too much. Action. Action. Give me action. Don't tell me we're going to do. Why are you going to do? Then do it. Academy level, Brother. level young people are suffering racial abuse. Academies are going to other oh. countries and getting it. I'm going to academy to talk to my academy. I've got parents coming. Is my son safe to play football here? Why would you ask me that? Yes, he will say. Yeah, they have to ask. I'm not speaking that to be happening now. Yeah, they know what time I'm it is. I'm sorry. No. It hasn't it changed. Is. That's what they're asking. Where's and for the you to managers? ask me that, it's like... Where's no. the change? There you go. There's a black staff That's the next coaching. One. Problem, it's, man. It's I've enough. seen plenty of them, my players, my peers, who've taken their coaching badges to give back to the club that they played and love for. And they can't even get a coaching position. Can't even get to be a physio. Can't. Why is that? It hurts, bro. No, it really does hurt. I've seen players that have been at the club show so much faith. Yeah? And you, in your face, you're like, oh, we love you. Oh, thank you so much. But hold on. He's done this now extra. Can I get a position? Oh, sorry. We don't have any. What? No. That's what's got to be changed. It's got to be changed, bro. What would you have liked to go different in your career? Because Chelsea released what you. What I should have? How I should do have you spoke feel out. about that? I should have spoke out, man. Because you, you, you just defended. Tell me about that story. Right. Because not everyone knows yeah. about that story. The story with that, it was pre-season. And we usually go Wells. Abbey was first, if I remember it. And um, you have curfew. Yeah, you, you finish training, four or five. You can go out. You've got to be back by nine. Yeah. No, I don't get me wrong. I was always with the youth players. I was giving them the, you know, motivation. and said, look, nice. keep digging in, bro. Just like you've got you inspired. Chance. Exactly. They look up so to I've been you. There. you now, we heard a little scaffold outside, a little ruckus, and said, wait, who, who's that? So, you know, team manager, caught four of them, or three of them? Yeah, three of them. And they was coming at 11 o'clock. Ooh, he let it have them. How are you supposed to be professionals and you're coming at this time after? So anyway. I Who was saying that? that? Um, who was it? Oh, God. First team manager. Was cussing at you? No, not cussing me. Cussing at these three fellow pro professionals. Okay. Teammates. Because they came in strong. Came in late. late. Yeah. So he told them off. So I said, boy, boys, you got a telling off there, innit? And this one individual, and I can't mention the name because for legal rights and so forth, he said, shut up, you nigger. Uh huh? I said, I know you're drunk. So sleep that off, man. Said, shut up, you wog. Come down here. And I look at the young boys and I said, nah. Wow. Come down here, you. And they tell me, Paul, don't do it. Please don't do and it. And these, these are professional. They're my teammates. One of them. All three of them are my teammates. The two of them was drunk. To me, I think you should have done something. You know what you're saying. But I was going vexed, so I was gone. I'm going down there. Said, Paul, please don't. So no, nah, enough is enough. Who was saying, Paul, please don't? The youth players. They know. They know what's going to happen. So I went down there. Say that again. You, bam, hit him. He dropped. I really wanted him to get up. Because I had more to give him, but he dropped. And I thought, tomorrow, he's going to sleep and realise what he did was wrong. And I said, cool. By tomorrow, I expect him manager or whatever. But it was our last day, Friday, where we were within this university. So we were in the kitchen, having our tray to get our last breakfast before we travelled back to London. And I had my tray. Team mate, Keith Jones was in front. He said, Candace, man. I said, what? My man. What about him? He's coming again. I said, don't worry, I'll knock him out again. He said, no, he's got a golf club. What? Just tell me when he's there. Just tell me when he's there. He said, Cannon, I turned around. My man's about to land me with a cup. I wow. turned around and blocked it with the tray. I hold him again. I'm about to book. Now the 
first team manager, the same manner, has got me in a half Nelson. Right now, let me tell you something, yeah? Nobody's heard me curse. I've never had to. They know me as King Cannons. We just have two York. But boy, I let off in the place. They wanted to say, is that Paul? <laughs> is that Cannonville? Brother, I start cuss. You see, all you want is taking off, and you're taking this for piss. What? To that rage just. It was so heat up. Oh, well, look. Chairman was in our changing room, oh. giving off black jokes. Oh. And Paul, didn't you find it funny? Oh. No, I didn't find it funny. And furthermore, oh. I don't want to hear those black jokes when I'm around. Oh. So here I am, thinking, whoa, well, hold on. This brother, I'm now driven separately with the video who took me back to London. That same individual is in the coach with the rest of the players. I didn't think nothing of it. Apparently he had a brick. He went and got a brick and put it in his bag for me to run, thought I'd come in. Anyway, that was the weekend. I thought Saturday, Sunday, Monday, got to be discussed with the manager. Boy, I got the phone call. Cannons, are you all right? I said, yeah, I'm cool. Okay. Not to return to the training ground. All right. And not to return to Stanford Bridge. And I'm thinking, okay, must be a cool down period or something. Half an hour later, I get another call. So Cannons, do you mind going down to Millwall and playing for them? Now Millwall were worse than this well, housey. <laughs> so when the man tell me about Millwall, I said, are you effing what serious? He said, look, get off me for what? what are you mad? Up, bro? So this is now oh when I realise I've been elbow. Not wow. this point, no. Every team, let me tell you something, every first team player, I didn't even get to say bye. They thought this person, no man, you racially abused. You're out. No. Wow. Poor being team out. So Brother. they not only were silent about it, they Brother. supported him in his you actions. See, I don't know. You see, I, don't, I can't even tell who supported. Well, obviously. But he's still there. Obviously, the club called you. Well, there you go. And give you that. Give me that. So they're, they're letting you know we're backing our guy. Simple. Well, well, man, I was, I was hurt. But as I was a youngster, I was, I was young. All I want to do is play football to you. All I want is to play football. And rightly so, because you've got mad talent and got mad work ethic and deserve I'm to be a on the pitch or they're not going to give you a chance. I'm not a troublemaker. But I could have caused trouble. That would have been the biggest scene of me explaining what happened. That was the opportunity to it show was. everybody that, Racism. that, listen, this guy got banged. Here's the result of it, yeah. but we're yeah. not standing for racism. That would so have been. you're out. That so would have been even if the they picture. kicked you out for what you done, mm. he should be kicked out for what he done. Right now. Just me too. So they pat him on the back and kick you out. How does that work? Brother? It doesn't. It sends out a clear Look message. How long. Oh, it did. But we're living in a generation where I don't think they're having it. They're not, they're not having it. I'm not sure if they know how to not have it. Because for me, the way to go about making change is to become entrepreneurs. Well, to if we had value that, to your community. if the value of that, that we can be together as solidarity together, we can stand heavily. At this moment, it's talk. And I think it's about educating. It has white, to be. Um, you know, Mark, it compatriots has to be. About, about us standing together. Well, look. Because we yeah. have to be together. God's made all these different animals to be able to be to. He's made all of us different creatures. A to situation, be Mark. And I heard about the news. It was just something I read. A young black lady, girl. Young black girl. And so they were talking about heroes in the war, World War II, to rep, you know. So she said, I, I can't do that. I said, why not? Because you never show that same respect for when black history comes of those heroes. So I can't show that. They kicked her out of the school, saying that she was racist. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. How can you tell her that? She's telling the truth. 
I'm not going to say it's the same thing like you said with Muhammad Ali. He said, I'm not going to go over to war and fight when they don't racially abuse me, but you want me to go and defend you who racially abused me. It's the same thing. But they throw them out, throw them out. Can't get back in school. She was racially behavior. So what I'm seeing here, and this is what's been showing how many times and times again, you're getting all these incidents, but you're not doing nothing about them. You're saying you are, and we've given this fine, you have given the little ban, but you've not done nothing because mm -hmm. the players still come back and still control yeah, still and another hurting. person's done so. Look at where we are with the boycotting. So now, the England Man United game, how did they give Rush Rashford? The, the abuse that Rashford, uh, I saw, the monkey in, I was like, what? Who's monitoring this? I was like, so now what are you going to do? Because we already boycotted the last two weeks. Same now you know the reason why I didn't boycott it. Look what happened again. What's going to happen? Because we said enough, enough. Now you said enough, enough. What is going to happen now? Because I ain't heard nothing again. This is what I'm saying. We're not heard nothing again. Uh, Where have you taken this now? While you're talking to me, I've got a picture in my head. The footballers stopping everyone in the team saying, here's where the abuse is coming from. Point to the people to. and listen and guys, you either get them off, that fan, who yes. do you want off? Us or them? Bro. All the fans, it, who do you want off? You us or that? them? That's a big fight. They're abusing us. That's a big fight with their faith and the premiership. They will not be allowing that to happen. Remember, you were talking about the ruling that they had. Well, take the know. risk. Ali risk well, his whole career for doing the right thing. We love Take him. the risk, ballers. Take but the, the FA risk. Ain't doing, this is that. This is what this is, dude. This ain't the cast of equal, equal, oh, equality. No, sir. This is what this is, and this is what we now need to fight. We've been trying to fight this. I'm fighting this. I don't know where it's taking me. I've got to continue fighting this, because I've got to believe in this. We've got to make a change. But if we don't make change, all right. We've got Paul Elliott, is that the FA equality? Great, um, great human being, was a great footballer. Hear what, he knows what's going up. He's putting something into place that we hope that will come out. As such, I don't know, I mean, I can't talk ahead of it until then. But like, all the clubs, man, and not just one. You think what you hear about abuse at certain clubs and so forth, you know it's going through a whole heap of club and players, they don't, they don't even complain. Too frightened, too scared to complain. If they're complaining about a player in the club, the club is going to react and turn around and, and get you out. Yeah? So that's the, and the same thing, that's how I felt. I said, if I'm making any noise, well, they're going to tell me, you know. Tell you, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm a, I can't take the situation. Where did you go after they pushed you out of Chelsea? Well, I went to Reading. Nice little club. I'm not saying I went. I didn't want to go to Reading. Reading was a nice little club. I went to Brentford. Frank McClinton was there. But Division 3, I thought, nah. Let's go Reading Division 2. Look, Man United came for me. An offer of five mil. You think Chelsea would let, Chelsea wouldn't let me go there? Who? Chelsea wouldn't let me go to Man United. Man United came with a five million offer to buy me. Yeah. Chelsea weren't selling that. Those are your enemies. They ain't going to sell you to your enemy. Playing, team enemy, they ain't going to sell me that. So, you know what I mean? I, I, and if Barton said, Charles, trust me, a chance to go there, I would have gone. Of course I would have gone. Sorry. And they were telling you to go Millwall. But tell me to go Millwall, you know. Tell me, Paul, would you like? Are you serious? What? The abuse I took at Chelsea? You want me to go? Baba, I, oh man, I had to get dark. I didn't know no better. Don't get me wrong. You'd have done things different. Yeah, but well, don't get me wrong, when you look back at it, it's always the case you would have done things different. I would have, if I was, the way I was, so stubborn and independent, I should have said something. I should have made a noise. I should have complained. I should have gone in the media and said, look, this is what happened to me. And it shouldn't happen to a black boy like that. But I didn't. Nowadays, we've got social media, Brother, got YouTube. We got, didn't have all that. Do you know what I mean? We just, had, just about had more about it than Because that's your voice. 
So, well, and, uh, you know, I, I heard yeah. Gary Neville. Neville. That's the only time I regret. Big respect to Gary Neville. Yeah, that spoke out. Yeah, so Over. speaking out. We need and didn't more. have to. We need, yeah, that's what I'm saying, and this is what we need. We need people that are about justice. Yes. That are about equality. Yes. Justice and equality doesn't have colour. No. It is just about being just and about being equal. Yeah. And everyone that's yeah. been created has been given all. the right to be equally treated. It, it's a difficult, difficult path to, to enter. What would you, what would you, um, what would you do if you was in the FA and you was in a dis on a decision making table? I couldn't be in the FA. But if you was and you had the decision to make, I to make be change, because I know decisions that I want to make a change would not be, be a fight. Okay, so good. I'm not that person so you, responsible. I would love to see change. If you did, but what change would it be? be change, well, they have to stupefy and look at all these racial incidents involving in a club and you need to do something right there and then. Would Not you want that? Wait, Bob, I want the person fined and I want the person banned. Hold on and learn. All right, you don't want to see that individual get too far, but you need to be learned and so, taught so they need to and go, educated. So just like you go on a driving course yes. because you've gone and yeah. done when I drove over speedy, speedy so bam, now you're giving me okay good so now we take you on an emotional or mental I mean, restructuring to help your racial you way know of how that is oh god i've got to get up i've got to go to the driving crew because i went and over yeah, speed there you go the same thing goes same for you now to buy you, you need to go to the, and educate yeah. about racism yeah. and so you know i want you to go into the school and talk that's your experience and why. That's correct. Yeah? You From go you in and speak to little black and boys and little black girls. That's how I see you that. You go in to speak to little white children yeah. and you share you with said? them, you know, your why way of thinking that, and how it's oh, changed man. now. Let me tell you something. These kids are not silly. I'm not going to lie to you. See, when I first done my workshop, there was um, young nine-year-olds and... First one, I said, boy, Mr. Cannibal, why did you go and do drugs? I was like, whoa, how did you know that? Oh, Mr. Cannibal, Wikipedia. There you go. Hear me now. What's Wikipedia? <laughs> Brother. <laughs> I had to go home, run to my... Just, that's like online encyclopedia, bro. I'm going on there to my daughter. What's this Wikipedia? Dad, man. I don't... Did you see all your information? Exactly. I never give them any information. Yeah. I didn't know where I live. Baba, these kids read that. They all read it all, bruv. And I'm saying, boy, what's what going on? What did you on? tell him? Baba, I looked at the teacher. He opened the door. I said, look, it's the worst thing in my life. Please don't ever trouble drugs. I took it because I was in denial. At what point in your life? That was, was the worst time. Well, at what point in your life did you get introduced to it? At 90, when I was retired, and I went in, it was passed to me. And I took it, and it just calmed me. I thought, God, this is So was right. you going through your own battles in your head? Of course was I was going through Just battles. mental stress. See, I was in denial, like I said. People were telling me about, Paul, would you miss football? I, I've been honest to tell them, no. Did, I was lying. Did you feel like an unfulfilled career? Of course it was. I've retired at the age of 25, my prime. What? Yes. 25? You understand, you know. I had cancer three times, bro. Bro. 96, 2000, 2010. Bro. I was a TA in a teacher's assistant in a primary school. The first time me got back into school to help teach a kid who hated school. But that was the joy of my life. But the worst thing, because of my chemo and radiotherapy, my immune system is weak. What was your choice of drugs? Crack cocaine. And, and what did it do to you? It took everything away from me. Everything away. But it took it for a time, but it came back. It so didn't my really bills, my thing, I was just, well, I never. So it fooled I you to think that? I stayed at home. Everybody thinking, why poor? I? I wouldn't open the door. Hygiene, you never looked after me till. And that was, I think, because of that drug taking, when it first initially, my cancer came up. Because I was in the rehab. I went in the rehab, and two, two, it was getting myself back together. I said, yeah, talking to a counsellor. Here what? I already showed you. I don't share my problems with anybody. I'm here in a rehab, talking to a counsellor. I had to talk to the counsellor, the white guy, and I said, he asked a question, why are you here? 
Are you stupid? Where do you think we are? It's a rehab. What do you think we're in here for? Oh, but why? I say, hey, what now? You're talking stupidness. Let me come out there. He actually is If you come out here, you're going to be trying the whole program. I said, well, boy, we ain't, we ain't talking. That's right. Let's Sit down for the hour. I watched the clock. I said, yeah. When it finished, I went straight to the office. I said, look, I'm not racist, but I need a black man. You need to give me a black person so I can talk to a council. Tell all right, boom. He came in three weeks. Paul, why are you here? Oh, not again. Exactly. Don't come and tell me that. Too. Exactly. No, Paul. But then he hit me with it. Paul, do you have a... How, no, that's it. How is your relationship with your mother? What are you bringing my mother for, man? In fact, why are you talking about my mother? I went overcast, bruv. When I mean over... But he hit it right. Exactly. He hit every note going. Come on. They know what they're doing, bro. Brother, since then, why are you here, I bro? talk, bruv. Yeah. I opened up right. like so. My shoulders yeah. were now light. And this is where I am to. I can share It this. might be a rehab, but everyone's there for different reasons. Bro. What's brought you here, bro? Why are you here? I am here. That was about you unraveling truth. Yeah. It came out. Looking at yourself. Why am I here? Look, you're retired at the age of 25. That's heavy. Even that day, no, the day, the same day, no word. This is how it went. Went in the coach, on the way to the ground, Sunderland. Everything closed up on me. When a man, my teammate's calling me, and he's calling me, Paul, like, as close as you are, Paul, Paul, I can't hear him. And I'm thinking, and then it come alive, Paul. Whoa, what happened there? Whoa, where was I? 2-2, two, two, when I play the game now, first start, boom, injury. I'm ready to get up there. Oh, this boy's rubbish, you know. Come on, boy, let's go. He said, Paul, no, just cool. My team is around me. Paul, just be calm. Let's take the free kick. He said, Paul, just be cool. What's wrong with you, man? And then I look at the little. The bottom half of the knee was that way. Top half was that way. I've dislocated the knee. I ain't feel no pain. I said, what the? I'm stretched off one time. I'm in the hospital. Lucky I'm you. begging the doctor to cut my knee off. It's trapped the nerve and it's throbbing. Oh, man. I'm begging the doctor, cut it off, please, cut it off. I know, because I've been there. You're not Foot that pain. pointed that way, knee sticking out. Brother. It's right here, bro. All I did is woke up with knee. a plaster, but that was the effect when man's telling you, I've got some bad news. So, Mr. Cannibal, you've dislocated, you've had one of the worst injuries in football. That's what you've I'm dislocated. Saying. You've torn your ligaments, yeah, you've torn your yeah. cruise I don't think you'll be continuing to play yeah. professional football. Now, exactly. that's not what you want to hear, is it? And wh wh who, who was you playing with at the time? Ready. Wow. I don't want to hear that. My head went like this and heard my mum in my ears. Paul, do your education. Right now, I've left school without anything. I didn't take no exam. Thinking football now is going to look after me. <sighs> I've got to retire. Where do I go from here? This is what I'm going through now. So um, this is the stage where I'm, I'm not lying, Mark. As we met, we met for a blessing, we met for a reason. How do you go from that age, yes. going through that trauma, that's when the drugs came in, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, that was a hard, hard. And I'm going to I went rehab twice. That was hard. And why it was hard for me, and why I had to think about it, it was my kids. Yeah, one of your toughest fights, isn't it? My kids. The how old, the kid how old are your kids? Boy, they were getting on like oh, nine, ten. Yeah. But they meant a lot and they couldn't see their dad. Dad's hiding. Why is he hiding? Oh. I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. Mum don't know what I'm on. My sister does. Okay. Don't tell them. I'm just, yeah. I'm so uh, glad. See, there's so many developments I can talk yeah, about. Yeah, bro, I'm telling you. That, me. mental health, how long racism. Was you, how long was you in that space for? Brother. That was years, bro. Really? 96 to 90, to 86 to 96. To That's wow. the first time when I went in rehab. How, how, come, how come the drugs didn't finish you? Because I've seen it finish. But friends. I'm surprised. How? I am surprised. 
because I was non-careish. I wouldn't be seeing. I spent every total of money that I had on it. Yeah, but 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 you were earning money like before. I wasn't. I was in it. Everything that went, like all my savings, them, I borrowed from family. I'll get back to you. It was that until they realised, no, nah, Paul, what's going on? No, 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 I'm all right. Don't worry. You're in denial, bro. This thing made your head think twice as better. Oh, I've got to do something. I'm going to beat. Don't worry, you're getting your money back. It's like it a bitch who comes up with an idea just out. to get what you wanted to do. That's want what to he get. did. Every man could tell you that if that was involved. Yes. Yeah, I'm telling yes. that to you. So, um, when did depression come in? Oh, depression was there. I was in that depression long Because time. you was in a depressive state. That's why I wasn't showing crying. nobody. Because right. I wouldn't show you that. No people would see that. They think, yeah, Paul, how you? Yeah. But this time I couldn't hold it. I had to hide. Don't come to my house. I was sinking in the window like that. I ain't answering the door. If you heard the door knock. Baba, I can't look. Who's that? No. I'm not answering the door. I had no tools to come give you. I had no conversation to come give you. I knew then that people were right, found out, sister, that want to help you. But you can only help yourself. When I say, Paul, what, what do you want me to do? No, no. I need to do it. So in other words, I need to make that decision to go to the rehab. And it was the best decision of my life. Really? Yeah, plot. The rehab oh saved life. your life? Yeah, man. Brother, it opened me up. Felt like, felt back in school, felt back in where I can make decisions. And that's where it was. From when I came out, 2004, I was invited to do the workshop. And I was like, the youngsters don't know me. They weren't even born. Paul, they know you. What? Internet. Encyclopedia. But I'm sharing to them how important it is why your mother wants the best for you. How education is. Don't take the road I took. Please don't do it. So I was open and I was funny and open. They were just listening. I had teachers, funny when you have teachers saying to you, oh, do you have to leave? What do you mean? Yeah. I got these kids from nine to three That's and it. they ain't quiet. You had them in a one That's hour. It. Look what you did. Yeah. I said, I, I, I love. That's right. Don't, I love this, you know. Cause, cause, cause they, they want people with lived experience. They live with it. To teach them about life. Don't get me because wrong. Because when you finish some of the subjects in maths, you actually never ever do again. You never do. I was chatting to her wife about all this difficult she had with certain yeah. maths lessons. She never even used it again. All they the effort she it. made to get it, when she come out, it weren't used. They don't use it. But you're going so, to use this mind for the rest of your life until your last breath. This is why. So this is the skill to develop. You have to. How to think. The help that's needed in a school, in a primary school. This is a school that had a lot of black kids. Some that couldn't even speak English. I went in the first day and I was shocked when a boy picked up a chair. I can't do it and threw the chair at the teacher. I went, oh my God. I went back to my school thinking, if that was me, my mother would have said, hey, what? Paul's not coming in tomorrow. In fact, he won't be returning. Because she would have moved something. To, I'm yes, telling you, bro. Right, man. And I'm seeing a young boy do it. I went, no. Yeah, you can't I need to hold this boy. He ran at the door. She said, leave him. I said, I can't leave him. I went out and said, let me tell you something. I'm here for a reason. I'm here to help you. Teacher, she's already got, she's got 28 to teach. You're one, she don't mind. But I'm not allowing that. Yeah. So here what now? You go in there and you apologize. She ain't gonna expect it. Yeah, you just go and apologize to her and sit down. Yeah, that's what I'm here. You put up your hand, boom. I was like the same thing. I know the answer, but I wouldn't put my hand because I wasn't just sure it was correct. So I, boom. I had parents come to me, man. So Mr. Cannibal, I'm hearing a lot about you. If my child gives any trouble, just come and tell me. That's about to go to if the teacher. If your child, if, if my child gives any trouble. Yeah, um, come and talk to him. Come and talk tell to him. Tell me. Then that's about to talk to the teacher. I love that. I was in there for five years. You no, come alive two, again. Two, four, ten, ten. You come but alive again. I did my book as well, the documentary. Please. Uh, autobiography. Tell, so uh, tell us about what you got out. Black and blue. Tell us about where you want, where you want us to follow you. Both, uh, what can we put out? Black and blue can support is you? a book that you would relate to. 
I'm Every person to related to it will Black sign me up at three in the morning. Okay, I'm going to get that. Um, we're at the website, paulcannival.co.uk. Um, find us there, see what we're doing. You know when you're holding a charity, you know what it's about. That's right. It's trying to find funding yeah. to help assist you yeah. and going forward and helping others. To donate and support. It's donate. That's all it is. Um, I've got a lot. Of, we've got the T-shirt that's come out that I put out. Well, a good idea with um, love, music, hate racism. I did um, love Chelsea, hate racism. And all the old boys, they've been buying it all over in America, all over abroad. And it's just there to help us fund so me can go out from my program into the schools. And that's what we're doing, trying to achieve right now. Um, this ain't the, the first time you're going to hear about Paul. As I said, I'm going to use this platform, but I'm going to be loud. Because right now, the effects of being enough is too much. Yeah. We've had enough now. Yeah. Action has to take over. Action has to take over. And I'm tired of it. And that's what I'm going to do. Oh, cool. Good man. I'm so proud of you, man. We've had so much we could have talked about, so, oh, but bro, to know we could I've do enjoyed part two and part three. Brother, you. what you're doing and so Because there's so much different areas of your life. Even but that, I'm man. hoping that people really understand today that uh, being on crack mm. don't mean it's over. No. There's hope. I've talked to guys who are bro. addicted to alcohol, crack, and, they, and I'm saying to them, what can I do for you? Picture your life where if you could choose anything and mm. you knew you could succeed, what would it be? Let's start that journey together. Mm. And I'm telling a man on the road this year, just to, to hear him and I've heard it's almost like there's no hope. They don't actually believe but, that they can change. See? And your evidence. When it went to that, and when they're talking about rehab, and when I first heard about rehab, it was the case of, Man would be in rehab three, four times. I'm like, what? Three, four times? Why do what? you mean three, four times? That's what I'm saying. Why are you? Oh, boy. No, sir. I'm going in for reason to help myself, man. Mm. Yeah? You want this to. is not that I want this. Because this ain't me. This is not me. And now when I say a clear mind, I'm a father to my kids. Oh. I can now be the father to my kids. Excellent. I understand. So now we're helping. We're assisting. And then youth out there need a direction. And they need that mentor. Yes. There's so many out there. Yes. But these boys, if the schools or the football clubs would allow these players to go into a school, these that idolise these players, see them every day and tell them what education means to them, they'd be like, thank you, sir. Thank you. Ba, 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 ba. Thank Down you. in their books. Down in it. We ain't getting that. We ain't not getting it. Hey, don't get me wrong. When you hear me, I'm an old time school. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying present players. But I you're mean, making an impact. They're listening. I'm trying. Bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Lean on, I'm trying. You're making an impact, Bob. They're listening. Guys, I've had an awesome time with the legend, Paul Cannonville. Listen, I don't care what you're going through. Um, you know, addiction with drugs, addiction with drink, hope, belief. There's a way out. Depression. My man was severely depressed. It wasn't just, you know, I'm in a bad mood today. He was severely depressed. Look how refreshing you are right now, Pete. Life is in him because he's got a vision, he's got purpose, and he's come to life because you are giving back. Whenever you feel like you want to throw in the towel and there's nothing left, just think, who can I share my story with? Who can I help? And let me tell you, if you could just give a pound, if you could give your time, if you could share your story with somebody else, you'll see there's someone in a worse position than you and they need you so badly and you're a life saver instead of a life taker. Don't take your own life. Don't let depression get you in that state. Don't let addiction to drugs and drink steal the power of your journey and your story, the impact that it's going to have on so many millions of lives. P's got his book out. You can have a book. If my man can have a book, if I can have a book, you can have a book. Contact him. He's left his details. Contact 
my organization, contact myself. Our details are up there. If you want to get your book out, your journey, uh, if you want to share with people, you want to give back and help, we've got platforms for that. We need people with lived experience and you guys have got the lived experience and you haven't utilized your wonderful gift of what you've been through. So God bless you. I hope you've all loved Paul Cannonville as much as I have. He's been a legend today. God bless you, my man. Proper warrior, proper role model. The youth need more individuals like Paul Cannonville. Love you, my man. This is the Dr. Prince Show. We out. Hope you enjoyed it. Until the next episode, peace.